This video and all of its contents, including any opinions expressed by the narrator, are strictly for entertainment purposes only and is not intended in any way as a substitute for professional services and consultation from a licensed therapist, doctor, attorney, or other licensed professional service provider. Each person must make their own life decisions, and those decisions are theirs. Welcome back to Find Your Alpha. I'm back at you this week with another terrific video story, and you can see the title on your screen. My parents knew my loser brother was sleeping with my fiancé. Should I forgive them? Uh, well, we'll see. Let's get into this and find out. He starts off and he says, I'd like your unbiased opinion on my situation. The players in this shit show are my ex, my former brother, and my parents. And he calls his brother his former brother. I'm 26 years old and had been in a relationship with my fiancé for just shy of seven years. So he was with this girl since he was 19. We were months away from walking down the aisle when I instead abruptly broke up with her in March. The split happened after I was made aware that she and my one and only brother had a lengthy affair the prior year. The affair ended when my parents walked in on them at their house, he says. So the brother was doing this guy's girlfriend or his fiance at his parents' house. Oh, boy. Instead of informing me, the four of them kept this secret and carried on like everything was fine, enthusiastically supporting my plans to marry this woman. Now, why would your parents do that? To make matters worse, their unholy union apparently resulted in an unplanned pregnancy that my ex decided to end prematurely. Now, I had to change the wording there because there are certain words, of course, that uh, are kind of hot buttons. So I think you know what I'm talking about. My parents are conservative and weren't aware of this until I told them. However, they absolutely were aware of the affair and covered for them. I may not have ever found out about the affair if not for my ex having loose lips and sharing everything with her sister. You know, that's one thing you will find about women is even if they've got like a dark secret, they'll want to share that with someone, typically someone they trust, like a good friend or a sister, like in this case, because they need a sounding board. They need someone to kind of bounce things off of where guys aren't as much like that. Her sister didn't tell me. However, her former boyfriend did. My ex's sister broke up with him in February because she fell in love with a woman at her job. It was a bad breakup and was a real hit to his ego. I found the guy to be somewhat of an asshole, so I wasn't completely surprised when she finally left him, but who she left him for shocked everyone. I have no problem that she switched teams, he says. It was just a shock as no one knew she was that way until then. Prior to this, I really didn't talk much to this guy as I mostly tried to steer clear of him and my ex's sister. Although he's still an asshole, I think differently of him now as in a way he likely saved my life, my mental life anyway. Uh, yeah, I would say you owe this guy some thanks. Not to say I wasn't devastated when I got the news, but things would have been much worse if I had married her. Uh, yeah. After finding out, the first thing I did was drive straight over to my brother's apartment to face him. At first, he played dumb, denying everything. Finally, after going round and round, he ended up admitting what he'd done and begged for my forgiveness. Though it felt really good at the time, I'm not proud of what I did next. I slugged him, not once, but twice, rendering him to a state of semi-consciousness. Looking back, I see how stupid that was and how it could have ended badly for both of us, but as they say, you live and learn. Uh, yeah, like I always say, never employ violence unless it's for self-defense, especially in cases like this, because you're going to end up on the short end of the stick, or worse yet, you're going to end up in prison. And this guy's lucky that didn't happen here. After leaving there, I went to my parents' house, where my ex also happened to be. I walked in and confronted the three of them at the kitchen table. Unlike my brother, they didn't attempt to lie, and my ex and mother immediately went into begging mode and started crying. Very typical. I'm not going to get into everything I said to them, but I'll just say I left there with everything off my chest. Not only did I break up with my ex that day, I also broke up with my immediate family. Well, no one can blame you for that. I cut all ties with them, and since then they've all been trying to get me back in their lives, but I'm not having it. 
While I have softened my stance with my parents to some level, my relationship with them remains strained. As for my ex, I'm completely done with her and wouldn't consider getting back with her if you offered me a million dollars. Now, it all depends on how long you'd have to stay with her. If someone offered you a million dollars and said, hey, you have to stay with her for at least 60 days, then I'd take the million dollars and, you know, stick it out. But if they said, hey, to get the million dollars, you have to stay with her forever, I would say, I'll pass. I see her now for who she really is, and she's definitely not for me. As for my brother, there's no possibility of reconciliation as the level of betrayal and backstabbing is just too great. Yeah, the brother obviously is a real low life. He's come to my apartment many times since, apologizing and begging to talk to me, but I've never let him in. I've also seen him out a few times and have just ignored him and walked away. A couple weeks ago, he showed up at my place again, stoned out of his mind at 2 in the morning. I didn't let him in and called my father to come and get him. That was my breaking point. The next day, I met with an attorney and had him send my brother a letter warning him to stop harassing me or I'd file a restraining order against him. That's smart. That's what you need to do. Don't resort to violence again. Since then, I've not seen or heard from him and I hope I never do again. What irks me most is that I have done so much for him over the years. Though he's older than me, I've always been the adult in the relationship and have gotten him out of so many situations. Just in terms of money, I've spent north of $7,000 helping him make rent, pay car payments, and have bailed him out of multiple dumb things he's done. Well, that's a big mistake because people like this are takers. And the more you give them, the more they're going to expect. I even got him his current job, and this is how he repays me. He's always been a loser and an F-up, but since he was my brother, I look past that. Now I don't because he's nothing to me. My uncle told me that my parents think he's back using and drinking heavily again. I told my uncle about him showing up at my house stoned, so it's probably true, but I really don't give a damn. At the time my parents caught he and my ex together, he was back living at their house for the third time in his adult life. So obviously this guy is a loser, and it wouldn't surprise me if he purposely got with his brother's fiancé to get back at his brother somehow, because his brother has his shit together, and this guy doesn't. You know, some people are just like that. They're very vindictive. After that, they did make him move out. I didn't know why at the time, but now I do. So that's one good thing that came out of this. The OP goes on, he says, While what my brother and ex did to me is pure treason, I'm most disappointed with my parents. I'd always been very close to them, and before this, I trusted them with my life. Now I feel like I have no one I can rely on but myself. I feel especially let down by my father, as I really looked up to him and thought he was so strong, only to find out he's a weak man with no backbone when it comes to my mother. Unfortunately, there are men out there like that. They become spineless jellyfish when it comes to dealing with their wives. He blames her for everything, and my uncle told me they've been arguing nonstop since this all happened. So the father is blaming the mother for getting him to go along with covering for the brother. Uh, no, you're just as much at fault. In fact, you're more at fault because you should have put your foot down. My mother claims she did it because she didn't want to break up the family. She also didn't want to see me unhappy, seeing that my ex was the first girl I ever had a serious relationship with. Mm, I thought that was probably the case. This was this guy's first serious relationship, and unfortunately it turned out very bad. He says, knowing what I know now, I wish I'd have kept things casual with her like we were during the first year of our relationship. Hmm, so that's interesting. So he was casual with her for a full year, and then he turned that into a serious relationship, and he's been with her, what did he say, six years? I mean, that's a hell of a long time. So he got to know her pretty well, but obviously he still didn't know everything about her because I'm sure he didn't expect her to cheat with his brother. On reflection, my parents understand they did wrong and realize their actions have permanently changed our relationship. The month after everything blew up, I moved to a new apartment near my job. Since then, I've not once gone back to visit them. They've come to my new place a few times and I've met them up at the clubhouse, but haven't let them see my apartment. So he is keeping them at arm's length, and I can't blame him. Getting away from everyone has been great for my mental health. Since moving, I feel better mentally and have slowly started piecing my life back together again. My hometown is small, so juicy news travels fast. Pretty much everyone there knows what happened, which makes the situation all the worse for my family and my ex. Yeah, juicy gossip like that in a small town, everybody's going to know about it. 
My question for the audience here is whether you think I'm being too hard on my parents. After all, my brother is the one who betrayed me, not them. I disagree with you there, man. Your parents definitely betrayed you here. He says, I do believe on some level they did what they did to protect me, but it's more likely they did what they did to protect my irresponsible brother, just as they've done his entire life. Bingo! That's why they did it. Should I put my feelings aside and force myself back into a normal relationship with them or keep them at a distance as I've been doing? I do love them and would be sad if something were to ever happen to either one of them, but on the other hand, I feel really good about myself and the way I've handled things with them. Let me know what you think. And that's the end of his original post. And now we're going to take a look at some comments and suggestions that he got back. But before we do that, I want to remind you, if you like what you've heard so far, be sure to hit that like button right now. That will help out the channel tremendously and help get this video seen by people all over the world. Now, let's take a look at some of those comments. The first one is from a woman. She says, I think you'd be wise to continue as you are. What your parents did was an outright betrayal and just as bad as your brother, maybe worse. It's clear to me and everyone reading this, they did what they did to run cover for your brother, not for your benefit. And I agree with that. My parents are just like this with my sister. She's constantly effing up and they're constantly bailing her out of trouble. You know, many times you'll find that in a family. There's always one problem child and the parents are constantly just coddling them and getting them out of trouble, which is not a good thing to do. The next response is from a guy. He says, you should feel no guilt, my man, as you've done nothing wrong. The only people that should be feeling guilty are your ex and your lying, deceiving family members. I can tell you, if my parents did something like this to me, I'd have nothing to do with them. They should feel lucky you're still on speaking terms with them. Maybe in time you can patch things up, but not now. It's too soon. And next, we have another response from a woman. She says, while I think you had every right to be upset with those who so deeply betrayed you, I think you must now forgive them to release the bitterness from your soul. As long as you harbor such feelings, you will be under their spell and will never get past this. Forgiveness doesn't mean going back to how things were before. It means freeing yourself in order to move forward and start anew. Set yourself free. Now, I agree with a lot of what this woman is saying here, because if you harbor this deep bitterness and anger for them, they're going to be controlling your mind. So what you want to get to is a point of indifference, where you really don't care, you're moving forward, and that's how you handle it. Because if you keep that bitterness inside, it's going to eat you alive, and you don't want that. And finally, we've got another response from a guy. He says, you hit the nail on the head when you said the only person you can completely rely on is yourself. So many of us believe differently only to find out otherwise after getting burned by a love interest or a family member. I'm the type of person who only expects the worst in people. So when they give me something a little better, it's a bonus. Trust only yourself and you'll never be let down. And this guy makes some good points as well. You know, if you trust yourself and you don't expect anything from anyone else, then whatever they do for you above that is a bonus. And that's a good way to go through life. So I kind of agree with what this guy is saying, too. So that's a look at some of the comments and suggestions he received. And now I want to take a look at his final update to see how everything turned out. He says, thank you to everyone who took the time to send responses to me. The knowledge I got from reading your replies was way better than anything I could have paid for. I guess what I really wanted to hear was that I wasn't being selfish and shouldn't feel guilty. And I got that from just about everyone who replied. I've decided to continue on with things as I have been with my parents. And if I feel like opening things up with them later on, I'll do that. Interestingly, since I first posted five weeks ago, my brother got laid off from his job, and guess what? He's back living at my parents' place. My uncle called to give me the scoop yesterday, and I just shook my head. Nothing has changed. Yep, zebras don't change their stripes, and leopards don't change their spots. And that's how your brother is, and that's how your parents are, and that's likely how they're always going to be. As for my ex, I really don't know all the details of what's been going on in her life as I finally decided to block her on everything a few weeks ago. Well, you should have blocked her as soon as you broke up with her. Before I did, she was texting and emailing me every day and I was reading everything she sent. 
I never replied, but when I'd read her words, I'd end up getting upset and ruining the rest of my day, so I eventually blocked her. Well, that's why you should have blocked her a long time ago, because you've been reading all these texts and emails and getting upset, and that's not doing you a damn bit of good. Before I did that, I did reply to one of her correspondents. She sent me a long list of all the things she'd do for me if I ever gave her another chance. Some of the things on there were over-the-top and crazy ridiculous. Isn't it interesting how many of these cheaters, once they're caught, they put together a big list of all the things they're going to do for the person they betrayed? And my question to them is, why weren't you doing those things before you cheated? It's just crazy. Now listen to this. He says, I sent her a simple response back, thanking her for the offer, but letting her know I wasn't interested, but my brother might be. And the OP says, boom, goodbye. And that's the end of his story. So I think this guy handled the situation very well. Once he found out, he broke up with his ex, he cut all ties with his brother, and he's now managing his relationship with his parents from a distance. And I think for him it's very healthy that he moved away from his parents and his brother. Because I think his parents, even though well-intended, have been a drag on his life. And now, even though this was a negative thing that happened to him, He's now flown the nest and he's out on his own and he's standing up on his own, being his own man. And I think that's important for all men. Now, of course, the one area where I think he made a big mistake is when he went over and slugged his brother a couple of times. Because again, violence has no place unless it's for self-defense. Now, I want to get to what I think are the morals of the story. The first one. Giving more to takers never solves anything. And I already discussed that in the story, so I'm not going to say much more than that. But if you keep giving to people who are takers, you're never going to satiate their appetite. They're going to keep wanting more, 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 and you're not going to fix things. Next, limit your exposure to toxic people, even if they are family. And that's why I think it was smart for this guy to move to another town, away from his parents, so that he can be his own man. Very important. Next, and I'll reiterate it again, never employ violence unless it's for self-defense. Next, don't allow anyone to guilt trip or manipulate you into anything, even if it's your family, even if it's your parents. Do what you know is right. Do what's best for you. Next. Cake eater types are never going to be satisfied with one person. And his ex was obviously a cake eater. She's the type of woman that wants, you know, a guy to be the provider and the potential father of her children and to take care of her. And then she wants a guy for excitement. So for her, she probably said, wow, I hit the jackpot here. I've got my fiance who's going to be my husband and he's going to be my rock. He's going to be my go-to. But now I've got his brother here on the side, his loser brother, that I can hook up with every once in a while to bring some spice into my life. And a lot of cheaters are this way, especially those that are married. And it goes both ways, although I think there are more women cake eaters than men. But men end up doing it too, which I do not condone either and I think are just as wrong. Next, use negative experiences to springboard your life to a better direction. Don't view them as failures view them as lessons. And hopefully that's what this guy does in this situation. And finally, when it comes right down to it, the only person you can completely trust is yourself. If you trust yourself and don't expect much from other people, you're never going to be let down. And those are my thoughts, and now I want to hear from you. What did you think of this story, and how do you think this guy handled the situation? Would you have done what he did, or would you have done something completely different? Have you ever been in a situation like this? If you have, tell us about it in the comments. Also, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to this channel, and I will talk to you on the next one.